I did the first study, perhaps even in this country. I looked at people that memorize Qurans using their iPhones and then people who memorize Quran using physical devices. I ran an actual experiment and then all of this led to me putting together best practices on how we can make physical Qurans better and then how can we make apps better. Three, two, one. The example that I use, I, I do a lot of career coaching. A lot of people tell me that, you know, how do I know which career or which major to pick? And I often tell them to start backwards. I say, like, close your eyes, imagine what type of world do you want to be in? What, what would give you excitement and thrills and being like, what, where do I actually envision myself? Is it in the boardroom with like 20 other people like peering over a whiteboard? Is it um, you surfing all the time, right? Is it you um, teaching kids in a classroom? Like think about the world first that you want to be in and then go back to your skills, what comes naturally to you and see how it applies. 20 or 50 years ago, if you liked math, what would your major be in college? A math. Yeah. You'd be a mathematician, right? How many people that love math are now mathematicians? Very little. Very few, right? You could go into engineering. You could even go to, uh, I don't know, like, uh, so you, could, you could become a teacher and start teaching math. You could go into linguistics and teach computational linguistics. You could go into the medical arena and make, like, uh, health wearables based on math, right? You could build up logarithms on detecting cancer, right? You can apply math to anything. There are people who apply math to Quran now and they're building like AI apps that can like correct your pronunciation without a real person there, right? There are people that find all these math miracles in the Quran, right? Um, so someone saying, oh, I'm not naturally like good at like Islam, for example, or I'm not naturally good at religion. That might mean that there's a very narrow scope of it, right? And yes, it might be true that they have no interest in that world. And that's something worth reflecting on but saying that like my heart's really inclined towards art not really towards the mosque means that you haven't perhaps found your connection to god yet and your connection to god could be art right how many people are like calligraphers or build really beautiful things and they say this is a reflection of god right like i'm manifesting god's beauty by creating beauty right and so does that make sense, right? Like, Absolutely. The, the, like, I, I feel like people take the wrong element and they're like, what do I naturally want to become? Like, how many, how many babies are born and they're like, you know what? I want to be an MRI technician when I grow up, right? It's not a thing. One thing you're implying here that many don't is that when, when, when people look at anything outside of religion, they see that as beyond God. Mm -hmm. like, oh, here's religion. This is where God is. Yeah. But art, that's separate from God. It's like, no, 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 no. We're saying he's the creator of all things. So yes. that means God created art. Yeah. He's the creator of all things. That means God created science. That means God created math. God created the very things that you're interested in and saying that's why you don't like aren't interested in God. Yeah. That's so good. I, I love that you said that. Find find your interests or find God within your interests. Yeah. That's Yeah, like you know like Moderna, right? Like that vaccine that saved millions of lives. I would argue is more consequential than, you know, someone who works at a private Islamic school, right? Um, that's doing bookkeeping, right? I'm not trying to downplay the bookkeeping. That's great. But if we told that Moderna, you know, or, or Pfizer administrator and said, like, leave your job, you need to go work directly under an Islamic institution, we would be doing a disservice to humanity. We would not. We would be getting less good deeds in front of God as well. We would lose our standing essentially. You know, there's something crazy someone shared with me, and like I always try remembering this. That they say that if you go to sleep, even sleep, which is like technically not productivity, right? Like no one would call sleep productivity. If you talked with like a kid and you were like talk, like you asked anybody, give me examples of productivity. Sleep would not register in the first top ten things. They would mention like getting things done, doing your hustle, right? Like all these sports, sports right? Like working out, going to the gym. Sleep would probably not be on there, but we're taught that if you go to sleep and you and you and you believe that I'm going to sleep because I I I won't have enough energy to serve my family, my community, and God without this sleep. That sleep, every minute that you sleep, is a good deed, and we believe this as Muslims, right? Yeah, and so people think that no, I have to have like a Quran open in front of me, but I don't believe that. I believe everything's in service of God. Mm. If you have that intention, if you have that intention, and. Even if, and this is kind of a side point, but I, I did want to just address it. Even if you did want to make money off of it, is that bad? 
No. If you want her to have more influence, is that inherently bad? No. Those things, I, I pray you get millions from this. Why not, right? I would love to have a nationally syndicated radio show with you on it, right? Um, Monday mornings with Mahmoud, right? Already, <laughs> uh, already a catchy title, right? I pray for your success. And so sometimes those things, unfortunately, come from a place of insecurity, right? Where people are doubting your intentions, doubting what you're going for. If the byproduct is money and influence, sure. The tool. Yeah, it's a tool, tool for you, right? If you use it for good. I mean, of course, if you were here and you're like not really listening to me, it's not really a conversation. And you're just looking at the ratings to see, you know, if, if my followers are on here or something, not that I have any, right? That would be weird, right? right. That would seem inauthentic. There are times, and I'm just being very real here, that like our masjid when we were growing up, the, the community we were in, it was a very specific way of thinking, right? Kind of, it was a little bit more closed. And there was a time that if you decided to become an artist or a lawyer or a business person. It wasn't really glorified, right? It wasn't It was accepted. viewed as you were choosing the worldly life. Exactly, right? You were choosing the dunya over the deen, right? The, the world over the religion. But those same people that kind of felt like maybe they weren't cool anymore, maybe they were ostracized in some way, now we're finding as these institutions are getting much bigger and they have you know budgets of $1 million to $5 million that they're running, they're needing these same people and they need talent across the board, Right? Like, even this person who went into interior designing, she redid our entire masjid, right? Like, made it really beautiful. She has, like, the whole modern farmhouse look going in, like, a bohemian touch somewhere else, right? Like, these are things we need to now specialize in. And someone clicked, right? Someone's like, oh, we need someone to do art. Why are we trying to figure it ourselves and trying to go on Microsoft Paint and figure this out when there's, like, professionals that have the professional tools and experience that could help us? You know what I'm saying? And so for me, for example, for a long time, I didn't find that click. And of course, it's something I'm still kind of growing myself. But one example of how I tried connecting is I love design, right? I love um, like the IT field and business. And I love the Quran, right? It's something that I, I really aspire to love more. And so when I was in my master's program, and I did my master's in, it's called human computer interaction, but it's basically like web design. But I challenged myself at that stage that, okay, I'm, I'm getting known in the industry. I have some street cred, right? I know my stuff. Blah, blah, blah. How can I now connect it back to my religion? And so I did the first study. I think I know for sure in the University of Maryland, perhaps even in this country, where I looked at people that memorize Qurans using their iPhones or Androids, and then people who memorize Quran using physical devices. And I run, I ran an actual experiment and a, and a, and a full study where I had people memorize using one device and then switch. And if they usually memorize with devices, I had them start off with a physical Quran. And I studied if their length of memorization changed, if their quality of memorization changed, what was the experiential factors behind this. And then all of this led to me putting together, um, you know, best practices on how we can make physical Qurans better and then how can we make apps better. And what was, what was your conclusions? There were a good amount of them. A lot of them were very tactical. Like, for example, like all the Qurans and apps are like black and white and people really wanted like color either to make it more visually appealing or for like the Tijuid rules, like the rules of recitation. Um, there were things that people said that we can't mark mistakes on a digital device. And so we always kind of end up trying to use a physical device or like really specific tactical things. But more importantly than that, what I found was that there was a general fear of using digital in the Muslim community, especially if you're like culturally a little bit more senior in age. But when you expose them to it and they got to use the Quran, they found it to be a great complement to the physical one. Like they were like, if I'm on the metric and just pick it up, if I'm like on the go and I can't carry a Quran with me, I don't want to put it in the bathroom, for example, I'll still have it in my phone. Right. And so people love like the audio features on a Quran. They love the fact that you could like open up anything. You could read the translation. You could read the meanings of it, which you can't always do with just an Arabic Quran. Right. So my point, though, was that I could have decided to do something completely professional and just talked at academic conferences about design and agile and like all these other things I love. But I wanted to be back to my community. Right. And I, alhamdulillah, I got um, a grant um, for about $1,000 where I was able to pay members of my community to do the study. So they were getting paid to read Quran, basically, right? I got published, and this is something that I'm still kind of taking to conferences, inshallah. And in fact, Tartil, which is like this um, really cool app, people should check it out, tartil.io. But basically, you can read Quran to it, and it'll like actually show Quran as you're reading it, and it'll hide it unless like you've read it. So basically, it's good for people who are memorizing. 
And we met recently and I gave them a lot of the findings from my study and they're starting to implement some of that. They added it to their roadmap of features to like improve for millions of people using that app. Wow. And 